Yo. Different angle. Don't get jump scared. Uh, for a special occasion, as you can see in the title, I am going to be building a keyboard. Well, building. I don't want anybody, any enthusiast to be upset. You know, this is uh, the MMK2 bare bones build, uh, which means all I'm going to do is put in the switches and put on the keycaps. So no soldering. I'm not even assembling like the case or putting in a plate or everything. That's like the most convenient part about this uh, build, really is that I don't have to do a whole lot. It's easy and uh, it's pretty cost effective. It's just like the big reason. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the entire pro thought process and everything of why I decided uh, on, you know, that board and everything. Right. Uh, real quick, I'm just gonna show all the stuff I got. Starting with, oh, First, probably uh, the keyboard I'm using right now. This is a GMMK one bare bones, uh, the black version. I think there only is the black version for this keyboard. Uh, it has HyperX putting keycaps and Cherry MX blue switches. Very basic switch, you know. Wanted to go with something safe, but I, I know Cherry uh, isn't the wave anymore, really, uh, for early enthusiasts. Uh, this has RGB lighting. I'm, I can show you real quick when I plug it in again. The nice part about, you know, customs, custom keyboards usually don't have their cable, like, uh, you know, attached or, like, undetachable, uh, as opposed to, like, a lot of keyboards you just buy. But I think uh, it's becoming the standard that you can detach a cable. Yeah, this RGB looks good. You know, the, the keycaps have a lot of shine through. It looks great. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be building a new keyboard. Uh, the GMMK2. Also bare bones, which means... Uh, I'll show you real quick. This is the packaging. Sit down. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to... Open up real quick, show you what's inside. Uh, I have a knife for this purpose. I'm gonna I'm gonna change my camera angle when I'm building it. Don't worry about it. Right now, you can't really see anything. Well, I extended the knife out further than I wanted to. Uh, yeah. Gotta get that open. Ooh, okay. Wait, let me actually... You know what? I'm changing the camera angle now so you can actually get some better unboxing experience. How's that? That, that looked good? Okay. So, I, I, I I'm kind of opening it backwards. This Everything has, like, the Ascent tag. Also, like, the keycaps I got. They're also from a you know, glorious PC gaming race. But, some... Probably, yeah, that's a quick start guide. Need that. Uh, is this a sticker? I think it's a sticker. People who are into that. Uh, Silica gel. Silica gel. You know, the stuff you're not supposed to eat. I don't know what that is. Hello. That, that looks quite good. Okay, but uh, in the back here, we have the cable in this little compartment. But here, the main event, ooh, also with some nice protective plastic. I think you could just put this on the keyboard uh, if you're not using it, if you want to avoid getting dust on it and stuff. Which is nice. But here in some, I don't know what it, I should call that, foam, is the, the bare bones keyboard. Okay. So, this is a ISO uh, layout keyboard, which means it has the big enter button. Uh, th that's different from the US standard layout. This is usually what most European keyboard layouts have. It's what I prefer. It's also what I have on my other keyboard. Uh, so yeah, just the big enter key and you know the backspace and all that stuff are a little different. The big differences to the GMMK1 on this one is uh, this uses a 
USB-C port, which you can see here. It's also centered. The other one's uh, not centered. It's on the top left, as I've shown you. Uh, this is white also, as opposed to black. And I think uh, another big difference is it's 5-pin, which is like the pins that your switches use when you plug them in, which is also why this could take longer. This is something I struggled with when I assembled the first keyboard. But yeah, anyway, bare bones, right? What does that mean? Uh, first of all, it's cheaper. Uh, this is the 65% version. That means like how much of the full keyboard is there? There is there is buttons missing. There is no function key row. There are no like print buttons or whatever. But this is a little bit bigger than the uh, other one because it's 65, not 60%, which means over there where my finger is, we got some arrow keys, which is something I definitely missed on a 60% keyboard layout. So that's one of the other reasons, I, you know, I decided to buy another keyboard. And yeah, again, bare bones, right? What does it mean? You have a case, as you can see, this is, uh, it has rubber feet, it has a port and everything, or a hole, because the, uh, the USB-C port technically belongs to the PCB, which is, you know, the electronic plate uh, that actually, you know, where all the software runs on and which actually registers your inputs and everything. That PCB is RGB hot swap. What does that mean? Uh, RGB means it has lighting. Hot swap means you can just plug in switches and plug them out, no problem. Keyboards that aren't hot swap uh, require you to solder and to desolder the switches. Another big reason why I bought this, I don't want to do that. I don't even have something to solder with. So I would rather just plug them in. Don't worry about it. Another thing is the plate. The plate is this metal bit here, uh, which goes on top of the case. Uh, and this is what, you know, the switches uh, kind of gets slotted into. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like a grid, right? You can see that. And then finally... The last part of this are these stabilizers. These are like, you can see they're like tiny switches, tiny translucent switches. You have them here at the space bar. Basically all the keys that are bigger than a regular key will have them, right? You have them for your backspace, for your space bar, and in this case for the bigger ender bar. Okay. All right, I can not quite toss that away because I'm gonna need the cable. I cheaped out and got uh, just stayed with the regular cable for now. Of course, I can always get like one of those fancy cables if I want to. Uh, also, ECAP puller and uh, a switch puller included. Very nice. Oh, it also comes with a free keycap. But yeah, here's the cable. You can get some fancy looped. Uh, looped is the wrong word to be using because there's a different kind of loop that's also important in keyboard building. Uh, yeah, just these fancy coiled cables is what they call them. I didn't go for them. They're like 50 bucks on the Glorious website. I'm sure you can get them somewhere else cheaper, but like for now, I'm sticking with the cable that comes with it. But you know, you can always upgrade down the line. All right, I don't, I don't need the cable now anyway. All right, moving on. I guess I'm going like in order of how we're going to assemble it. This is not the nicest packaging. I'm sure there will be something else inside. This is just a... No, the package it came in today, which is why I streamed it today. This is from Drop, uh, all the way from the US, so it took a while. Okay, there we go. We got some nicer packaging. This is the actual package the switches come in. These are 35 pieces of the Drop X uh, Holy Panda uh, switches. Uh, and yeah, I bought two of them because there are 35 pieces each and you need about 70, uh, switches for a 65% keyboard. Another reason why I didn't go for the GMMK Pro, which uh, has a 75% layout is that I'd have to buy like three of these, which would leave me with a bunch of leftover switches and, uh, it would obviously cost more money. I think these cost me like 19 bucks each or something, maybe even less. Uh, they were on sale. 
Uh, of course, I have to pay for shipping and I also pay tax on them because they come from the US. Oh, okay. This is actually packaged very nicely. Oh, I just knocked something over. Not important. Don't worry about it. Look at this. Look at this. It's like it's like how you would get some chocolates. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get other ones real quick. And then I think I'm just going to start putting them in. And then I'm going to show the keys. All right. This is the second one. Of course, they're identical, right? That's the whole point. I don't want to have two, as, two sets of switches on a board, which, you know, may maybe you're into. But that I think that would feel very weird. The one thing I ha have to check is... You know what? That there's something that GMK, uh, GMMK1 does better. You look on the backside here, you have your feet, like the ones you can pop up, and you have like the rubber feet here, which is the same on a GMMK1, but I'm going to detach it again. Uh, this has a little place for your, uh, over here, this, the, for your keycap puller, which is kind of nice. At the same time, this does look kind of ugly because uh, it's a different color. It doesn't really match. And there's still like a pretty big hole in here. It's not all that seamless. So I could understand if you want like the cleaner aesthetic on why you wouldn't include uh, a place to put the keycap puller uh, on the GMMK2. Uh, so just that in a, to have it in a way that looks more clean uh for the back nothing on the back okay then i think we should just get started i'm gonna uh un uh, i'm just gonna get my switch puller out oh my i ripped the plastic on it's like this there was another one included in the uh first gmmk so even if they didn't ship it with uh, a switch puller i could put it in I'm gonna get close up here. Can you focus? Okay. So this is a this thing has five pins, like three are rubber, two are metal, and uh, that means it fits into this five pin keyboard. Having less pins on the switch than on the keyboard isn't a problem, as far as I know. So you could also buy these in three pin, so uh, they would still fit in the keyboard, no problem. But you can't have more pins on the switch than you have on a keyboard. So if you have like a 5-pin switch and a 3-pin keyboard, that wouldn't work. Just uh, letting you know. Okay, so theoretically I should just be able to push him in. Oh, and uh, it's already not... The thing is, if you mess this up, you kind of bend the pins and then you have to unbend them, which is a real hassle. Okay, I'm trying. It's not... Okay, there we go. That sounded good. And yeah, basically, I'd, I'm just going to do this over and over, right? This could take a while. We'll see. I actually do not like how this sounds at all. And later on, we'll, I'll have to try all the keys to make sure they actually work. Because maybe like a pin didn't properly get in there. And then I'll have to pull it out and bend it correct and everything. But yeah, usually even if you put it in wrong, it shouldn't be a problem. Wah. But there is quite a lot of force required to push these in. Makes me kind of nervous. Oh, there's a little oh, light spot here. Oh, should be fine. On the camera. I don't know if y'all can hear this, this click. Later, I might have to, uh, you know, get the noise gate out of my microphone. You can actually hear how these, uh, you know, how these switches sound. And how the keyboard sounds. Ah, okay. I'm just doing uh, the top row. I really hope I have enough switches. Like in an emergency situation, I do have some uh, MX Blues left over, but <laughs> you know, I'd rather not put them in there, of course. Just have them all be the same. But I'm I'm sure I'm sure it'll be fine. Like seventy should be enough. I'm just pulling them out kind of randomly. I, I, it's kind of unsatisfying. So if 
anybody has OCD, you can actually really see like the tray, but I do apologize. I'm gonna try to keep it even for. Okay, there. That would be our backspace right there. Oh, see, that's not all the way in. Oh, also last time, the uh, PCB in there wasn't like quite aligned with the plate uh, on the GMMK1. So uh, I had to, uh, some of the switches were in kind of janky, kind of uneven. Still, it still works fine and everything. But yeah, just uh, something that was a little bit annoying to work with. But these require quite a lot of force to put in. I really hope I'm doing it right. Of course, I always got to make sure the orientation is correct. I mean, it, when you're building it, it's pretty obvious. Because uh, it's not like... Uh, it's quite asymmetrical, so... There's really only one way to put it in. But even... Like, even if you'd get it wrong, you'd notice pretty quick, because the switch just wouldn't go in. It's getting... Uh, the lighting outside, it's getting kind of dark. I might have to turn on my light. Okay. We've already actually gone down to... Like, we've pretty much emptied this out already. Okay, now I'm doing it in a different way, like, again, no real rhyme or reason how I'm pulling out these switches. I think I can go a little faster. If you're gonna watch this on, in a video, it's gonna be sped up anyway, like, this is not really interesting. Maybe having music on is bad, because, like, I'm going to speed it up, so I'm gonna probably going to put music over it anyway, but... Eh, who cares? Okay, big question now. Do I put, like... I've been going row-wise, but this is where it becomes asymmetrical. Right. Over here, it's like... So it, it's not a complete row anymore. I'm just going to put it in on the enter key. Again. All very superfluous questions, but, you know, I try to keep everything pretty satisfying. What? Okay, this should be, what is that, cap, uh, caps lock? Oh, also, what I'm noticing here, on the GMMK1, there's a very small light, a red light, that turns on when you have your caps lock on. And basically, from most angles, you can't really see it because the keycaps are in the way. But it, I guess it's still nice to have, right? So maybe just something you can check. Like, I guess I'll just show you. Uh, dude, I'm so bad at navigating this camera. Okay, this is the caps lock, right? There's this tiny red light. See right here. But when I'm looking at it, like... When I'm just playing video games or typing or whatever, the way the keyboard lies in front of me, I don't see that at all. It's just the keycaps are in the in my line of sight, and I do not see the button uh, or the light. So it's kind of useless, but it's, I guess it's still nice to have. Anyway, this doesn't exist on the GMMK2. Okay, we're done with our, with our first 35 switches. Moving on. I think I'm just gonna do them all the same this this time. Ugh. But thus far, uh, everything's gone kind of smoothly. No pin bending yet or anything. Okay. Oh. Okay. This one's struggled a bit a bit more. Oh, I should. Oh. oh. 
When I press in the switches at the very end, the other side actually lifts up. So I'm just gonna hold it down with my other hand now. Yeah, we definitely have enough switches. No reason to worry. Just kind of putting them in. Rapid fire. Actually gotten better at it now. Actually it feels like it's easier too. I don't know. Uh, ah, there we go. Come on, get in there. There we go. Oh, yeah, I, I feel like your fingers kind of have to be strong for this, or you gotta apply quite some force. Okay. Right, the spacebar one. I'm sorry that I don't have a better camera. Like, ideally I'd have an overhead camera right here, but like all I, all I have is my webcam, which I've already you know placed somewhere else. Uh, placed somewhere else, so you can kind of get a good view. But like, I can't really have an overhead camera. I'm just, I lack the tools. Okay, and now we're close to done. We'll finish with uh, two switches left. So cutting it kind of close, but then again, you can just look up how many you know switches a keyboard actually needs if you're planning on building one. Okay, there we go. Look at that. All the switches are in. Again, these are the Drop X Holy Panda switches. Um, so what'll be up next are our keycaps. Also. From Glorious PC Gaming uh, Race, GPBT, not the best name, I suppose. Uh, Rainforest keycaps, German layout, another big reason for me getting this keyboard because I use a, I guess, a standard EU ISO, not even EU layout, really. Maybe it is, I don't know. I have an ISO layout on my current keyboard, on a GMMK1, but there's, there, the umlauts are missing, uh, and you know, some things are off, like where the uh, parentheses are, and some stuff. Like I have, I'm, I'm gonna put it in the frame again. I have like, yeah, and actually see it here. Or the other way, I have qwerty here, here, like that. but. Yeah, what I when I actually press the Y key, it press it spells a Z because that's the standard, and you can't just put the Z cat a Z key there because it's shaped differently and it wouldn't really fit. So, it it spells qwerty, but when you type it, it's really qwerts. So yeah, I just wanted to get the proper layout, get some German keys. These are the rainforest color variant. This is just gotta get it open somehow. I really, I, I really don't want to rip anything. It's definitely a peeve of mine when I'm opening stuff. I don't want the paper to rip. The packaging needs to be intact. But this is giving me quite some trouble. There we go. Do I just lift this out? Okay, this has like a nice little thing, I guess, to put it on store shelves. Okay. Oh, there's another keycap puller included with it. Also go now. Ooh, and another sticker. Cool sticker. Ascent. That appears to be the tagline. And another one of these things that kind of look like, you know, name tags or have on your desk. Okay, look. All the switches. This is, of course, uh, we're not going to be needing all of them because this is for a full keyboard layout so a hundred percent keyboard uh and like i said this is just a 65 percent keyboard so we're not going to be uh needing like the print keys and everything okay the enter key actually says ascent i don't know if i like that or not but i'll have to deal with it uh these are not shine through unlike the pudding keycaps which i have on the gmmk1 
these don't really let through any light. I don't really need it, uh, the lighting or whatever. I just really love this, like, the green, the jade, the, you know, mint color scheme. Everything between blue and green I just absolutely love. So I decided to go for these keys. I wonder if they're sorted properly, but yeah, I'll just start. I could use the free, you know, glorious key that they sent with the GMMK2 as my escape key, but that really wouldn't fit with the color scheme. But it's nice to have, like, a little novelty keycap. Yeah, again, there, there's a keycap puller included with the GMMK2. There's also one included here, very nice, so you'll have a keycap puller. But I could just use my old one as well. I'm not, I'm not in uh, any need of more keycap pullers, but they're nice to have. Okay, which would I start with? I guess I start with this, because it has the escape key. And the numbers. So, I just press them on. And what, something that surprised me, like, the first time, when I, uh, like, put on, assembled this other keyboard, is how much more force you needed to put the, the keycaps on the switches. They would be on much tighter than, like, uh, uh, on a pre-built keyboard and sometimes you know trying to pull the keycaps off i would actually pull out the switch because they were like so uh firmly stuck together but that was uh because the switch switches weren't in properly anyway i'm just gonna start the escape key here oh yeah big click and then we're gonna work up one two three four i wonder if where the circumflex goes I might have to look up a German keyboard layout because I'm not a hundred percent on where all the keys go. But like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that that should all be fairly obvious. I don't know if you can hear the sound, like the thump it makes when I press the keycap on the switch. Putting in all the numbers right now. Just going row by row, like I did with the switches. Also, I'll be unsure about like the extra uh, file we have here or the extra column we have here. Uh, because or maybe maybe I'm using row and column. I don't know. But uh, I don't have that on the 65, so I can't just look over there. Okay. I'm actually going to look it up. I'm not entirely sure. But I feel like it should just all be in, in order. Like the way it's put in. I can't be entirely sure. Alright, I'm already typing some. I'm a, I'm a little excited. Okay, let me just... Oh, I, I was about to type on the wrong keyboard. Uh, wrong. Okay, this is using a product page. I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it's gonna be Ah uh, It's gonna be paste or whatever. I'm just going, you know, the way it's put in here. Okay, next we gotta get to some uh wait, we gotta put in the tab key. Gotta find that real quick. Where do we have tab? Um, oh, it's still in here. My bad. Okay, they are in order. Uh, tab under the escape key. And then you got your QWE.
Ah. <laughs> I almost put the E key in wrong. Uh. Right. Okay. We're continuing with this one. Next up is R. Uh. I don't want all the. I want to open this properly because if I open it upside down, all the keys will fall out. I gotta be a little careful. There we go. Oh, I should rattled one loose. But this is nicely done. Like all the keycaps, they're in order, so I, I just go along, and it should all work out. I have to leave out some keys because uh, usually the keyboard would extend further right, but. This takes all the thinking out of the process. Listen. Oh, this does look quite nice, I gotta say. I, I love the color. And then it's... And plus... Okay. And I guess... Maybe, okay, I can't, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe that's right? The lead key over there? Okay, next up. Caps lock, of course, under the tab key. Uh, ASD. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then we're back to umlauts with U and A. And then a uh, hashtag or pound, depending on what you call. It. Oh, they're leaving the enter key. I guess I guess the these are like the special keys or whatever. But the backspace is in there, so I don't get it. Uh, what would be the? I actually have no clue. Oh, I guess no. I don't know what key belongs here. I should be able to tell by the color, but I don't know. I'll have to look it up later. Uh. Right. Oh, we're, we're, we're going to continue on the other end. With shift. And then the greater than and less than. And then Y, because, you know, it's where German layout has the Y. That's, that's the main difference, really. Everything else is negligible, but the, the Y and the Z switching places is one of the biggest differences. In my Big thump. Uh, what is next? After M, we have comma and dot and all that stuff. All right, I'm to do that. Uh, again, very nicely packaged. Everything makes it real easy to assemble. Uh, yeah, we got comma and semicolon. Is it a semicolon? I think it's a semicolon. Maybe this is a semicolon, the one that comes with a dot. I'm not sure. And you have your dash. Your dash, which is actually slash and question mark on the American layout. I don't particularly love. And your big shift key. Wait, no, that can't be right. Because there, there needs to be a stabilizer. There needs to be a smaller shift. 
It's probably within the... Yeah, the smaller shift key is with the special ones. Wait, but if I don't have the big shift key here, what does even go... What do I even put there? Hmm. Good question. We'll see. I'll have to look out the 65 assembled version. All right. Where does the circumflex go? I don't know. Moving on. We got control or the German version. Control. Steuerung. Got alt. So oh, code. Oh, code is, I guess, the windows. Yeah, this would be the windows or whatever, but it just says code. Don't mind. We got alt. And then we got our space bar. Wow, dang, this is actually, I guess this is uh, done. So it works with multiple layouts. It actually has like six slots in here. I'll just six uh, openings for those. Oh. Okay, not bad. Next up, alt grr, whatever that stands for, I have no idea. Uh, and the function key, very important on a 65% keyboard, the function key, because, uh, you know, you don't have any, uh, you don't have any function key, the function row is missing. Okay, I guess what comes next are the arrow keys. Because this is where the arrow part of the keyboard would be. So that at least solves I, the mystery of where... Is this, is this right? I'll have to see. I, it, it doesn't look right. Like the up arrow key I'm kind of uh, suspicious of. Okay, now we gotta solve our key mystery. I gotta, I gotta look up on the glorious PC gaming. I'm, I'm pressing the wrong keyboard again. This isn't even plugged in. Uh, let's see it. GMMK2. Uh, can I get? Okay. Okay, looking at it, I, it, this is the English layout, but it's easy. I can just translate the, uh, I'm actually going to need my keycap puller because I did some stuff wrong. Uh, at the top, after the backspace, it, it is supposed to be, it's supposed to be the delete key or the remove. I think delete is the right. So my keycap puller here, which does. Then it's page up, page down, and end. Okay. Uh, there we go. Has the nine. Maybe there's a different one. Wait, there we go. Does this work? It's kind of too high. But, hmm. This is interesting. Maybe I can find it on the key size. Uh, uh, I wish they would show me it on a 65 layout. I guess I'll just have to look at the picture. Hmm. This is a problem because I only see a picture of, you know, the, the, the English one, the QWERTY, you know, the US. And it has page up and page down uh, after the... Actually, the delete key also seems too small. So, I don't know. 
I, I can I should be able to kind of guess like how it's supposed to be done. Uh because the keycaps vary in like height and everything and like shape. So I should be able to like figure out which keycaps go where. Maybe page this page up fits very nicely as after the delete key. Also, I wonder, I wonder if with the the GMMK software if I could see it, like, uh, if, oh, uh, can I, can I switch to a different keyboard? Maybe, um, maybe I'll be able to see it when I just plug this one in. I hope I don't have to download some other stuff. That would kind of suck. Okay, I'm just gonna plug this one in, uh, and then figure out how it's supposed to look, cause uh, it should show me the right layout. Hopefully it shows me the right. right. Let me just get that cable. Nice, you know, braided cable. Gold plated actually on the USB-C, which is neat. And then to USB-A. Uh, do I even have a slot open in my keyboard? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna unplug my other one. Plug it in there. This is gonna be a t very temporary, so I'm just gonna have to tape uh, the cable running across my table. Fix it later. Gotta make sure everything's kind of neat. The cable managing thing or whatever. All right. Or do I just have an open slot? I actually do not. Uh, which one? This one should be my. Yep, I was. Oh god. Which way around do you have to go? Okay, that way. Now I'm just gonna plug this in and hope it gets detected. Wait, do I have to flip it the other way? No. There we go, it's lining up. Okay. Oh god. The switch isn't reacting. I'm pressing and nothing, nothing is happening. Maybe it's still being set up. That's my, my hope right now. Quick update. Uh, it's not registering my inputs. I hope it's software related. I hope it didn't mess it up with the switches. Then again, I, I highly doubt I messed up every switch, so I'm just gonna look software. What? Best million space bars, that's crazy. The cable. Uh. Glorious. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just download you. There we go. Glorious cool. Oh, boy. I should have done that in advance, to be honest. That is on me. Oh, also something that's new I didn't talk about yet is that uh, it has... I'm gonna just on the sides here, uh, this little strip uh, that lights up. There are one of those on both sides. All right, classic zip file here. I'll run the setup, hope it works. Hope I have an. Yep. Yeah. Rushing through it, hope it works. Then again, I feel like this should also work without the software. Maybe I messed something up, but I, then again, I would have to have messed up all the switches. Uh, all right. I'm just gonna plug it 
in instead of something else I don't really need right now. I hope this isn't important. Again, all my USB things are... May take a few seconds for devices to appear. Okay. I hope, I really hope my uh, USB controller isn't failing me right now because it's getting overload or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting. You know, the keyboard's lit up. So uh, there's power there for sure. Uh, still waiting. Maybe I maybe I have to unplug some stuff. Maybe my uh my controller is just failing. Gonna unplug it. Okay. Uh, should be cube adapter. Okay. Maybe now. Do I also have to unplug my key? Okay, I've unplugged a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna have to keep troubleshooting. Oh, but the problem is, of course, my keyboard isn't being detected, so... Oh, okay. Oh, there we go! There we go! I just wasn't in all the way. Okay. It could happen to anyone. In all the way, you know? There we go, there we go. Okay. Now, can I type? I can. Fantastic. Oh, it's gonna be so weird. Oh, I just realized, because backspace used to be like the key that's all the way at the edge, and now there's an extra key there. Ooh. Uh, can you show me a uh, German version, maybe? Uh, that would be so. So right now I'm seeing the American one, and I know where the American key. No. All right, I I'll just have to see. I'll just have to look one up. Oh, uh, spoiler! These these keys feel um uh these switches and everything they feel amazing. Uh, looking for GMMK to German layout. Oh my end! Obviously, one that I forgot that I know which has has to go in and which I kind of need right now. Of course, is the enter key. Like that one. That's an obvious one, right? And the other shift key should be pretty obvious. Wait, I think. I think this is just a 65% box. Hold on. I, I could have just solved all my problems right here. Alright, I'm gonna press enter multiple- Oh, I should have really unplugged the keyboard. So, like, yeah, it's hot swap, it's whatever, but like, oh, this cable's really in there. No wonder I had such a hard time pushing it in. Good lord. Uh, yeah, because otherwise I'm just gonna press the key a billion times when I try to put the keycap on. That fits quite nice. Then this should be the shift key. The shift is also smaller, unlike the 65 version, because like the arrow key kind of impedes on its space. Also something I'll have to get used to, but I, I don't really ever use that shift key anyway. Okay. Now I guess it's just everything in order again, right? Uh, let me pull up the software again. No, uh, it's disconnected. Oh, everything's just falling apart over here. I got so much packaging. It's in the way. This is gonna be quite the cleanup process. Okay. It should just be... Wait, is it page down? And then page up? Yes, it is. Where is that? I mean, yeah, this looks correct. Also, I'm just gonna... Maybe it's a little high. I can't tell. Uh, actually, let me try swapping, because, like, this one's just too tall, this key. You know? 
see how that looks. Actually, that one looks too low. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'll. That's something I can adjust, though. Like, for now, I'm happy with how it looks. Alright, this is it. Very nice, you know. Color. From, from, the, the camera doesn't do it justice. You can just look up the keycaps online. My saturation on this camera isn't that good, but we, uh, we're starting with the dark green and we kind of get increasingly brighter. Okay, real quick now. I just want to do... I just want to try to see if you, if you can actually hear the typing. I got to get some stuff out the way before I do that. Oh, man. I, I just got plastic and keycaps and everything lying around here. So much packaging. Yeah, I think we're good. I'm going to get my, my mic kind of close. I'm just going to watch OBS closely. If I get it really loud, you can hear it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can live, uh, get my noise gate out. Uh, that way you could actually hear. Not that. Uh, uh, filters. How do I deactivate? Uh, I, cause I don't, I don't want to delete the filter. Can I just switch it off? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna uh, set the open threshold all the way down. Yeah, now you can hear everything. You can hear my breathing. I'm sorry. Just try to focus on the on how the switches sound and how the keyword sounds. And you'll notice uh, the the switches, which have stabilizers, sound differently because the stabilizers make a different sound, right? Ideally, you'd have it as close to a normal a switch as possible, but yeah. So I'm just messing your keys. Okay. Uh, this is what it sounds like. I'm gonna add the filter back on my mic. Uh, where are we at? 25, I believe. Okay, much better. All right. I'm not gonna uh, do a typing test because I'm gonna embarrass myself with my very, very bad words per minute. No, thank you. Uh, I'll save that humiliation. I'll, I'm just gonna talk about some stuff, you know, why, uh, why I chose this and, and everything. Basically... A similar reason I chose the GMMK one, it's that really uh, you can you can probably see my face. This is probably okay. Uh, it's just if you want to build a keyboard, this is kind of like the best bang for your buck option while you're still actually building something because uh, usually. ISO keyboard layout cases and plates and, and PCBs. I think PCBs work either way. But uh, cases in particular are hard to find. Like, Rob has uh, a few good alternatives to the GMMK uh, series, I'd say. But they're all ANSI. So if you want an American layout or a global layout, whatever you want to call it, there's a lot of options. But I feel like for the ISO layout, you're not going to get something of that quality any cheaper. And again, you're sa you don't have to do any soldering. Everything's compatible and it's just really easy to do. So this isn't really as much building a keyboard as just putting in some switches and some keycaps. But, you know, I still enjoy the process. It still gives you a lot of customizability. You know, uh, I didn't even do any research onto the, uh, the switches. Because I'm like, I can just I can just, I can just put in different switches, right? If I don't like him, I'll, I'll go with something else. Maybe I get some green switches or whatever, right? And same thing for the keycaps, you know. These keycaps, they're really nice. Again, not shine through. Costs like 50 bucks, which is... 
kind of expensive. I think like the pudding keycaps I got for like 20 or whatever that I had on my GMK1. But at the same time, like keycaps can get crazy expensive. So this isn't, this is definitely not on the high end side of thing price. So yeah, if you're looking to build a keyboard, like maybe like your first keyboard or whatever, and you want to have an ISO layout, I do strongly recommend uh, the GMMK series. Maybe you want a Pro, you get a little knob, it's pretty cool. Uh, maybe you want like a full keyboard layout where you get all the keys, you get a numpad and everything. Or maybe you just want a compact one, you can get a 60% or a 65% one, depending on which model. So yeah, uh, those are my thoughts. I'm just going to clean up everything and enjoy my keyboard right now. I'm going to be going offline. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.